you have your Bibles, would you turn to the 121st Psalm? I would almost tell you to grab your Bible, put your thumb in the middle and open it up. You'll probably be real close. Real close. Watch. I'm here for 30 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Psalm 121. The Word of God says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, and even forevermore. May God bless the hearing and the reading of His Word. I started hiking um, two, two miles back into the woods over at the hoop hole a little over 30 years ago. And things change in 30 years, you know. Um, I don't remember that mountain 30 years ago being as tall as it is today. But we started back then staying in a tent. They had been staying, Leon and Coy, actually put that trail in over there. They started going back there in 1958, before there was a hoop hole. And I was fortunate enough to join with that family in 92. And we would hike the two miles back into the mountain there and stay in a tent during deer season. And um, back then and still today, I can still make that two-mile hike from the parking lot to our campsite in about 58 minutes if I don't have a backpack on. I can still do that even at 60 years old. So that hasn't changed. Without a backpack, I can still truck it. However, back then, when I was 40 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old, even 50, I never gave it a second thought about taking a 60-pound backpack, filling that on my back with a 30-pound day bag over the front and a 7-pound rifle thrown over the backpack and taking off up that mountain. Never gave it a second thought. Then something strange happened a few years ago. Got a little harder. A couple years ago, I was standing in the parking lot over in Botetourt County at the Hoop Hole parking lot. And I looked up the trail and I looked up at that mountain. And I began to wonder if that mountain wasn't bigger than my ability to conquer it anymore. I mean, I had all that gear sitting on the tailgate of the truck. 60-some pound backpack, roughly 30-pound day bag. I was going to have to carry bags of groceries in each hand and a seven-pound rifle. And I looked at that stuff, and I looked up at the mountain, and I thought, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I want to, but I don't know if I can do it anymore. The mountain seemed to me to be, for the first time in about 30 years, an insurmountable problem. And I think Kathy will tell you, uh, 2017, 2018, my last year up there, I didn't sleep well the night before because I had gone up the week before and taken a load up. And it was beginning to get into my mind that that mountain was an insurmountable problem. I wasn't going to be able to conquer that thing. It kept getting bigger. And I don't know, um, it's been a strange week with problems, medical and other and unspoken problems. And I imagine that you too probably have problems that seem like insurmountable mountains in your life. And God's Word wants us to know that although our problems may indeed seem insurmountable, 
that as long as we are with God and continue to walk with God, then we can conquer every problem we are faced with if we will stay with God. And he gives us a couple tips here through the psalmist David on how to conquer our mountains or our problems that typically tend to, if we're not careful, become our mountains. First, God reminds us to remember to turn to Him too with our problems. Look in verse 1, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. The word help in verse 1 comes from a Hebrew noun that means to aid, to help, and also one who helps. And help implies assistance. So when life takes that turn uphill, don't forget to turn to God for help. When I was standing in the parking lot two or three years ago, looking up at that mountain, and it began to have that emotional toll on me that I'm not going to be able to do this much longer. I can't do that. I can't handle it. I'm old. All them other bad words. And I know that some of you are looking up at mountains in your life too. Don't miss the wonderful opportunity to be reminded that Almighty God who created this mountain and that mountain over there in Eagle Rock loves you and He cares about you. And he wants to walk with you up that mountain. As it relates to Eagle Rock, as God created that mountain, he can help me conquer it if I'll partner with him on it. And in that, sometimes we think that partnering with God is simply to ask God what I need or tell him what I need and then sit back and do nothing and wait for him to do it all. That's not how it works. And if you think that's how it works, then that's probably why your prayer isn't getting an answer, because you've got a role to play in it too, beyond just asking. It is continued to talk and find out and use resources and listen to what he says that you need to do for him to help you get up that mountain. And if you do it, he'll help you get up that mountain. But if you don't do it, He's not going to do your part for us. And that's a tough lesson, like looking up the mountain. But as I stood up there a couple years ago and looked up at that mountain, it dawned on me, and I remember it well, that the God that I serve created that mountain. And since he created it, not a big problem for him. I don't want to say this to you, brothers and sisters. God may not have created the problem that has become your mountain in life. But He is there with you and He can help you conquer that mountain too. If you'll keep Him in partnership with you in getting up there. That's the first thing we learn from that word help. Secondly, we have some problems... Uh, that we can turn to Him and realize that He gives us some promises. That if we'll turn to Him with those insurmountable problems and mountains in our life, if we will turn to Him, then He's going to give us a couple promises. Look again at verses 3 and 4. The psalmist wrote, He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor nor sleep. The key word in those two verses is keep. K-E-E-P. It comes from a verb that means, a Hebrew verb that means God guards and protects. So as we bring that into the context and then into the relativity into our lives, then we understand that really what was going on back then when I was standing in the parking lot of Hoop Hole Trail looking up at the mountain wasn't so much that I was concerned about I'm old or I'm getting older or any of that or 
you know, I've got almost 100 pounds on me. It's going to take me probably an hour and a half to close to two hours to get up there. It's going to take me the rest of the day to recover from it. That wasn't the problem. That was part of it. It was a symptom. But the problem was, really when I thought about it, was I was worried that with about 100 pounds on me, and sometimes Jesse will tell you, that trail gets a little narrow. And I was worried about falling. That was my problem. And I had never worried about falling before. But now I was worried about falling. And if I fell, I was probably going to get hurt. And that kind of shook me to the core a little bit because I hadn't thought like that before. I just put the stuff on and took off. And maybe you're worried that you're going to stumble under the weight of the burdens that are on you right now. But God wants you to know through His Word here that He is watching over you, that He is protecting you. And He will not allow your foot to be moved. That's an interesting statement. Because the word... Moved means tottering in Hebrew. I always heard it called teetering. I never heard tottering. I guess them Jewish have it a little different than we do, but teetering, if you know what I'm talking about. God knows our problems. And He knows that sometimes our problems, those mountains in our life, shake us to our very core. And as because of that, they shake our faith to its core. Because when we're doing well, our faith is doing well. And when we're not doing well, our faith usually isn't doing too well. And God knows that when we're shaken to our core, it's going to affect our faith. And he tells us here in English, Hebrew, it would say, you know, I won't let your foot be moved. In English, he says, I know you're teetering. And you feel like you're about to fall. And you think you're going to get hurt. And you might not be able to get through this. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to let you fall. I'll be right there. I'm right there with you. And hey, even if you do fall, I'll pick you back up. I'll keep you from getting hurt. And you may feel like your faith is teetering, but let me encourage you to open the Bible and pray about it. That's what the psalmist is doing here. He's just talking to God. Take it to God. Let him have it. Unleash it on him. He's a big boy. He can handle it. He already knows what's going on. Let him have it. I do. There's some times me and God have some shouting matches. It's okay. He already knew it. But I get it off my mind. I get it off my spirit. And then I feel better. And then sometime later on, he says, you know, you was a pretty big jerk. You know. But I'll pay attention to the peanut factory over there. But hey, come on, we got more important things to do. And that usually comes after I tell him how bad the world and everybody in it is. So after you pray and you talk to God, and just give it to him. And if that means vent, vent. Give it to him. Get it off your shoulders. Give it to him. And then relax. Release it. You've got to let it go, or you're going to hold on to it, and you'll accomplish nothing. Then the second thing I want you to do is to talk to a good friend. That's what the psalmist is saying here. Talk to a good friend. Open up to them about it, and don't hold back. Let them have it too, because a good friend can take away a lot of misery if you open up to them. And even if they can't take it away, they'll offer to help you through it. And that, my friends, is priceless. So take it to God in prayer. Use all your resources. Take it to family and friends who you know love you. And let them have it. Open it up to them. See what they say. I think they'll offer to help you through it. And then thirdly, don't be so hard on yourself. Because having our faith shaken doesn't mean we're weak. And it most certainly doesn't mean we're failing and the door back there is opening. And now it's shutting. Cool.
It simply means to have our faith shaken. Simply means that we're human. And guys, it's okay to be human. As I thought about that particular part of this passage, it's probably good for me to tell you that sometimes my faith teeters too. When I had COVID and my primary care office told me that because I had been exposed to it and then thus because I probably had it, they couldn't see me for two weeks. And the first thought I had was a whole lot of anger, and I wondered when our medical professionals stop seeing people because they're sick. And I thought, what? You're telling me I'm probably sick, and you're not going to see me? I thought that was your job. That's frustrating. It's irritating. And it's not the average doctor and nurse's fault. Because they're just doing what Carillion or Lewis Gale tells them to do. But it's frustrating. And the local ER people. So I asked them. I said, okay, in two weeks I'll be dead. Right? Well, if it gets worse, go to the ER. Well, those are the people who are overwhelmed. Because all the local doctors are saying, you're sick, I can't help you. What's our world coming to? Then I witnessed Kimmy's ongoing medical struggles where they continue to treat the symptoms without treating the cause. And that shakes you up because she's my daughter and I don't like seeing her in pain. And these people went to school to learn how to make her well and they keep not making her well. It's frustrating. And oh, I know, our culture is the blame everybody but me society. I understand that. And we're the politically correct society. You're not supposed to speak out against the healthcare system. I understand that. But it's real and it's true. And I imagine some of you have been through it too. And it hurts. And it will cause your faith to teeter a little bit. And when your faith teeters, you begin to lose trust and faith in people who are supposed to be there to help you. Who do you turn to? You can't turn to your doctor. He won't help you because you might be sick. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. That's frustrating. But God's Word reminds us we're in God's hands. If we turn to God with our problems, we are in His hands. And He's not going to let us fall. And even if we get away from Him and do fall, He'll pick us back up. We're in his hands, and that's the best place we can be. So hang in there. God is watching over you. You have a firm foundation through Jesus Christ. You're on solid ground. Our life is under God's providential care. God is our helper. Now it's up to us to ask him for help. He's watching over us, and he will not let us fall. And that even means from grace. He's not going to let you fall. Not by accident, but by His grace. Another problem, promise of God in our text for those carrying heavy burdens around today is the truth that God never sleeps. Sometimes, really, and it's true of me too, I'm not knocking anybody here, God is my last resource that I go to. I try to fix it myself. I try to see if the doctor will help me, as long as I can answer all the COVID answers so he will talk to me. Then we got our counseling experts and our this person and our that person. You know, and then when we're done with all the experts and the therapists and the counselors, we throw up our hands and say to God, where have you been? Why aren't you helping me with our problems? We haven't asked him yet. We've turned to everybody else but him. And yes, we are blessed with wonderful medical people, professionals, therapists, and counseling professionals, and that is a blessing. But do not make doctors and therapists and government officials and counselors your God. That is reserved for Almighty God. Don't make them your God. That's what he's saying. Why? 
Because that place belongs to God. And secondly, especially in our culture, I'm telling you, because I've been there with Kimmy and with myself and being told I can't help you because you might be sick. It still blows my mind. So it seems like we talk to our medical professionals and we have to tell them again what we're going through and we go through this repetitive cycle of hurt and get better and hurt and get better and hurt and get better. They deal with the symptoms. They never deal with the solution, what the cause is. And so we're frustrated. And it seems like they're asleep when we're talking to them because a month later we go back and they're like, oh, you had this before? I just had it last month. So you go through the same things over and over again, and you lose sleep before it. And my friends, the implication of verses 3 and 4 is if your God is sleeping when you need them, you don't have much of a God, do you? If whoever you turn to besides God Almighty, that counselor, that expert, that government official, that whoever, that doctor, if they're asleep and not listening to you when you need them, then you don't have much of a God, do you? In contrast, Jehovah Almighty God is always awake. He never falls asleep on the watch of wanting to help us, of guarding and protecting us. He never gets distracted. He's aware of what we're going through. He's aware of every detail. That's why we can give it all to Him. He already knows. God's eyes are always wide open and fixed on what you need when you need it. But we have to go to Him and ask. We have to do our part. And when we do, we find out that we can get a good night's sleep tonight because we are in God's hand. He is our helper. He's watching over us. He's close beside us. So when the Bible says, The Lord is your shade at your right hand. That means He is close with you. He is with you every step of the way. Verse 6 implies that God is also guarding and protecting you from accidents, which means some things did not happen to you this week. We get real caught up in what did happen to us. The psalmist is reminding us that some things didn't happen to us this week because God was watching over us and protecting us. So don't forget to thank God for what didn't happen to you this week that would have if you hadn't been in his hands. That's what it means the sun will not harm you by day and the moon by night. He's guarding over you. He's with you. Now the question, why is God willing to make all this these promises to you and me? The short answer is because God loves you. It was from God's love and grace that He sent His only Son to die on a cross for us, which we begin today, the first Sunday of Lent, to acknowledge the life and ministry of Jesus Christ and heading to the cross of Easter. And God wants us to believe in Him and He wants to, us to invite Him to help us with all of our problems and situations, not some of them, not to be the last resort. Give it to Him. Talk to Him. Walk with Him. And when we turn to God who created us and redeemed us through Jesus Christ, God wraps us in His protective arms and He whispers into our hearts that nothing is too big for Him. Nothing. And as we close, I didn't make it up the mountain the last couple of years. Um, primarily because I didn't understand then what I understand now. That fear of falling. God would have picked me up. I didn't know that then. Then I had some medical issues and stuff, and so I haven't been back. But I know this, my perspective has changed. And the last time I was at the Hoopole parking lot, instead of looking up at that mountain and thinking how big it was and how insurmountable it was and how am I ever going to get past that, how is that ever going to be taken care of for me? For the first time in a long time, I saw the beauty of that mountain and realized that God who created it loves me. And if I were to take up off that trail that moment, he would have went with me. He'd have guarded me. He'd have protected me. He's with me every step of the way. 
And then that, brothers and sisters, in our day and age, maybe the application for us is we have been so accustomed to telling God how big our problems are then maybe it's time for us to stop telling God how big our problems are and start telling our problems how big our God is. And we'll see a change of perspective. I know many of you are dealing with life-changing situations. You have problems um, that are shaking you to the core and have shaken you to the core. And I want to encourage you today to continue to turn to God. He does want to help. He loves you. And He wants to be there with you. And know that He is close beside you. And rest well tonight. Knowing that God preserves your soul. You're not going anywhere. He's got you. And someday we will be together with Him in His eternal kingdom. And I think it's coming quicker than we think. The rapture is the next thing on the prophetic calendar. Are you ready? The only way to be ready is to continue to lean on God through Jesus Christ. And to him be the thanks, and to him be the glory. Amen? Amen. Would you please stand as you're able for our closing hymn number 317, Only Trust Him. I want to offer an invitation to you if you've never publicly received Jesus Christ uh, and, or have never been baptized. We'd love to talk to you. Uh, just come forward if you'd like to join the church. That goes for you guys in the back too. We'd love to have you. Uh, number 317. Thank you.
It has been good to be in God's house today. I hope it's been a blessing to you, and I hope there was some part of the service uh, that you can take uh, and think on and meditate on this week. Talk to God about it this week. It was kind of weird to see the door half open and then shut and nobody was there. So maybe that was the Holy Spirit coming in to let you know he's with you, and he's going to take care of you. In that, I think, uh, maybe tonight, no. Yeah. Ain't American Idol on tonight, sis? For anybody who don't know, her Marky Mark uh, is on American Idol. Uh, and maybe this week we'll get to see him audition and sing, and we'll be able to follow. He, he heard from him this week, and it's uh, March 13th. So oh, this week, next, week. next week. I've seen a couple clips of him already. Yeah. So we are waiting. Tell him, we'll <laughs> go Marky Mark. Rock on, man. Yeah. For I keep him in your prayers. Yeah, that's a process, man. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that work in us, and to him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all the ages, world without end. Amen. Go in peace.